Hello, join me today in uh, the countryside of Worcestershire. Um, today is episode one of a geolog series that I'm planning to continue. Today we're hitting up a little, well it's not really little, it's got about 10 caches in it. It's a loop up in Lower Broadheath. Now there is a road that basically runs directly from my house to Lower Broadheath. But I've gone along the country, uh, the, 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 I've gone along the, um, the pathways, the footpaths in and around this area because this is one of the last couple of times over the next couple of years now that this area just over there, well that area is going to be filled full of houses um, so it will kind of, kind of ruin this nice little open landscape, farming land that we've got going on at the moment. If you look just over there, just there, that there is the Morven Hills and in true British weather it's currently overcast and a little colder than it probably should be so um, I'm all windproof today which after my hike a couple of days ago where I ended up sweating a lot through my trousers I feel I might be a little more suited to today's weather than it was last time still a little bit of a ways out from the first cache still 1.7k as the crow flies so I've got a little bit more walking to do so we're um it's about a, a kilometer or a click out from this cache um, but I'm currently walking past honestly the smell the smell is incredible here I'm currently walking past a cake factory uh, just here Honestly, this smells incredible. It's mouth-watering and I really want a cake. Grrr. Might have to find somewhere I can stop off and uh, grab one. Because honestly, it smells so good here. So we're now on the way to cache number one. About 800 metres away from me, it's Church Micro. They are all across the country, so they're kind of little black canisters. Ma magnetic most of the time, and they usually stuck to fences or some kind of thing outside the church. I'm just going to go have a look for that one. Um, that one might be a too much footage of, because obviously, big massive camera. Yeah, so I'll have a look. It does appear like in true British weather fashion. It's about to start raining. Um, it's the problem, I've got my waterproofs with me. So we might have to get up in the nose in a bit. But let's see how we're going. I almost nearly missed this turning for this footpath as well. So I could have continued along this hedgerow here, all the way along, and it would have brought me about 400 metres up this road that I'm about to join onto. Which wouldn't have been the end of the world, I just had to walk down a massive amount of um, massive uh, length of road. So that could have been a bit annoying, but I found the footpath and now we're just walking along this edge of this field until um, we get to the road. And the church is in sight, which is literally just around the corner now. I can see it just over there. So I'm going to be um, going to be headed over this way. The church is literally just there. So that's where I'm aiming for. Still in stealth mode. Far too many people around to even look for that one. So I'm going to go and start the loop to uh, then come back again and have a little look later. Um, it's right next to a graveyard, so there's a lot of people in there. So I'm gonna, gonna leave this one for about an hour or so, head to the start the loop, and then, yeah, or I'll come back and have another search for that one. Back out of stealth mode now onto the big camera. We are heading down towards Lyricist A, uh, currently 182 metres out from it. Um, so it's about, what, maybe a couple of, 100 steps down this way, 
Um, I know that because of pacing. Um, and yeah, so I'm currently 180 meters away from it. It's, um, it's the start of the loop. Hopefully I'll get this loop done in about an hour, hour and a half maybe. Um, so yeah, I'm slowly getting down to this one. The route, because of the place that this is in, the signal isn't brilliant, so I haven't fully managed to download the cache. So it might be a little bit more difficult, but we're gonna go for it, see if I can get it. And yeah, hopefully it'll be a nice quick find. Um, because that church micro, that was just about eight people in the graveyard. There was far too many people for me to have a proper, proper look around. Too many muggles, as it is, as it were. So yeah, I'm gonna walk down this way a little bit, and then hopefully find the cache pretty quick, sharp. Right, we're now within ten meters of the cache. So I have a feeling. Wow. Yeah, so GPS has been a bit sketchy, but I have a feeling it's going to be around this area somewhere. Probably around this concrete post, because it stands out a little bit here. So I'm just going to drop my bag, rest you upon the bag, and then we'll have a little scooch around. Yep, there it is. Sorry, I was just checking whether it's poo or not. I'm just gonna hope, just gonna do the actual loop and then I will um, hope for the best. What's the date today? So, just signed it. Just gonna place this back into here. Kind of still live back on, back into the box, back into the place I've got it. It's quite well hidden, so yeah, not viewable to the uh, the old muggle out there. So we'll uh, place it back in its place. And uh, I'm still feeling drops of rain, but nothing been good enough to warrant waterproofs yet. Let's just quickly log that one as found, found it, draft it, and then when I get back in, I will write a nice little message for the cash owner, because um, they like hearing, cash owners like hearing stories about what you were doing and how you found it, um, so I'll include a little bit on that, and then all good. So first cash of the day done, now on to the next one in the loop, which is currently, We are currently 400 meters away from this one, so I will uh, head over that way. It's about maybe 13, 12, 13 at the time. On a scout, so I haven't really been back here since. But there's another one just down that way. But yeah, follow the useful footpath signs, and I will be on my way to find Lyricist B. Yeah, I will catch up with you guys in a moment. <laughs> Forty-nine meters from this cache, um, which means it's probably somewhere over there. Um, so yeah, we're now forty meters away. Uh, this one has fully loaded, so I have had a chance to to read. Had a chance to read the cache description. Um, it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, but yeah, there were some amazing views as you've just seen by right that way. So we'll um, be going towards this bridge here. And then, yeah, so we're currently within 10 metres of the cache now. So I should imagine it's just over this, this side of the bridge. So yeah, once again, just gonna pop the bag down. 
have a little search around. Um, I'll search because they're always quite a good indication. But it might be on the other side of the bridge. So I'll uh, have a little look around that. I think, it's, I think it's time to look at the hint. I've been searching for a while now. Just gonna have a look at the hint. Right, okay. Right, that would make so much more sense. Looking on this side. I'll be in for an interesting search, actually. Aha, found it. Just found the cache. It's just underneath some stingy nettles, conveniently. So I'm just gonna maneuver those out of the way while I just grab grab the cache box. Again, same kind of setup. Somebody this time has put um, a little balloon in it. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna sign the cache and then same thing again, really. Sign date. Move on to the next one on this uh, this loop circuit that I'm doing today. So yeah, just sign this cash and then move on. So behind me, as you can see, is a big open field. So I should imagine we'll be walking around the outside of this to get to the next cash, which could be be good fun so that's cash two of the day found again slight spots of rain it's a growing pattern but yeah stick him back in there give him some cover again give him a little bit more cover and boom cash found log it on the app and let's get going so here as you can see next cash we go on to navigate. Again, not fully loaded. We're about 200 meters that way, just over by this sort of this sort of pony place. So we'll um, get walking around the edge of this field, sticking to public footpaths, etc. Um, one of the nice things about this public footpath is if you're coming the opposite way to the way I was, there is a little sign just over over there so if you're like me and uh, you're well known for slightly overshooting things because you're not concentrating whatever uh, it's very useful to have that just so you know you're not going too far along and well the farmer wins at the end of the day because nobody's trampling the crops so yeah good fun right around the edge of this field and I shall see you at the next cache Boom, cache three found. Now on the way to cache four, I did, however, manage to sting myself on some stingy nettles. Um, no biggie, but it's a bit annoying when there's stingy nettles growing around cache, caches, because you physically can't do anything about it. Anyway, it is now properly starting to rain, so I think it's almost wet proof time, but we can continue for a little bit longer. Um, yeah, just check them on the right footpath, and then next cache in about two or three minutes or so. Just got the vibration to let me know I'm within 10 meters of the cache. Something tells me it's gonna be around this kind of area, just cause it's a bit more trodden down. But I'll have a look in and around these trees, just around this area. And then I'll check the other side, just see if I haven't missed anything. But yeah, um, cache number four now. So I'll uh, have a little search around. Have a little loop for things that look out of place. Um, there you go, straight away, just around the back of the tree. So I will mark this one up and head on to the next one. Cash number four, found it. Um, it is now probably starting to rain, so I've stuck the wet proof on the top half. 
um, it's not very, it's, it's, it's quite warm. So I'm having to uh, just t-shirt under this, no mid layers. Um, so yeah, we are, uh, we are here. We are um, about 300 meters again away from the next cache. So it's, the caches are quite short and close together, which is quite nice. Um, City, well you could from the last catch point, you can through the gap in that tree, those trees there. Just there. Just behind my finger there. It is. It is. That is the place we started off. Um, all that 40 odd minutes ago. So we're um, we're looping basically around that church, which is quite cool. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's going well to be fair. Mild shame about the weather. Um, but obviously you can't get hot sunny days all the time. So we'll, uh, we'll take a hit on this one. I came prepared. I've got my waterproof trousers as well if it gets really bad. But I don't think we'll need them looking. It just looks like it might be a light shower that's passing over really. So yeah, we'll uh, see you when we get close to the next cache. We're at cache I don't know what anymore. Um, within 10 meters of it, it's just a hedgerow here. So, look for places out, look for gaps in the hedge, that kind of thing. That's normally my indicator for geocaching, um, where geocaches could be hidden, well trodden down places, that kind of thing. Again, not necessarily always going to work for you, but it's a solid indication of where things might be hidden. Because obviously these things are kind of hidden in plain sight, so I'm just going to have a little Mooch around low down in this tree line, potentially up in the trees. That is another place it could be. But yeah, let me have a little mooch around here for a moment and I will catch up with you. So here was the big indicator for this one. If you look all along the hedge, it's not that many indifferences, but if I turn around, just down there, there is a branch that sticks out. And just beside the branch, just down that way, is where the cache is hidden. So, I will have a little sign of that one and get, get moving again. That is one of the more difficult caches that I've found on this uh, route so far. So that was cache number five. Um, just because of the nature of where it was, it's just kind of a, it's all the same. That's nothing that really stood out um, for it. And I'm going to be honest, I did look at the hint for it because that was almost a necessity for that one because I spent a couple of minutes searching, couldn't really find anything, so I thought I'll just have a look at the hint. And yeah, so we ended up with a pretty good find there. Uh, not as quick as the other ones, but you win some, you lose some. So we're now moving on to Lyricist F, which is, uh, again, about 100 or so meters down this way. And, um, Getting further from the church at the moment that I'm using as my central point. So yeah, we're having a, having a good old mooch. It's also now stopped raining nearly, so I might take off the waterproof now because it's not, not necessarily cold either. But yeah, certainly wanting some food now and I uh, wasn't smart enough to bring any with me, but I've got plenty of water. So yeah, I'll see you at the next cache. So, minor inconvenience. Uh, the field that I needed to walk through to get to a cache had a, what looked to be an angry looking bull in it. So I'm, um, I'm not risking it. I'm going to backtrack my steps past the last three, two caches. There is a footpath that leads onto a road. So I'll walk down the road and then I will um, make a reappearance a couple of fields down from onto the footpath that I was just on. I will make an appearance a couple of fields down on that. Um, and then I will backtrack my steps because I think it's at the very edge of the field that the bull was in um, And I wasn't going to walk across it because it was quite quite close to me really uh, It was definitely bigger and musclier than all the other cows in that field. So I was like no No, I'll not have been But it's not something I'm really gonna risk for the sake of getting a cash if I'm gonna be honest So yeah, I will see you at the next cash or oh, when I get to the road All right, um, I've made the decision now that I should probably go home. My phone's on about 20%. I don't have a power bank with me. So I will be back to complete this loop at some point. Um, I'll start from the other side and work my way around. It's a bit annoying, but I forgot to put the power bank in the bag earlier, so I'm um, now paying the consequences. The good news is, I'm now entering Lower Broadheath again. 
which means I can get myself some food. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this one, guys. Sorry it's been a bit disappointing, um, but I will uh, come back at some point, finish this cash loop, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.